Joining us for a little bit is United States Senator from the state of Louisiana, Dr. Bill Cassidy. Dr. Bill, welcome to Keel. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hey, thank you for having me. Always good to talk to you guys. Brett, Ka- Brett Kavanaugh. Look at that. I'm 30 seconds in and blew the line. Brett Kavanaugh. Tell us about him. What do you know? He's a uh, remarkable man. Uh, he is um, appointed by George W. Bush to the district court in D.C., which is considered the second highest court, if you will. Uh, on 12 different occasions, something he has written has been adopted by the Supreme Court as the correct position to go uh, you know, upon appeal. Uh, he is uh, very committed to his faith, committed to his family, committed to our country. I think the president made a, a great pick. And he is a strict constitutionalist, and he is on record as saying so, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, for example, there was an, uh, an appeal of a law regarding uh, the ability of Washington, D.C. to restrict the ownership of a semi-automatic weapon. And, and his dissent was, and he lost the dissent, but his dissent was that, listen, the Constitution says that you're going to have a weapon. We may not like it, but it says that you can. And so even though we may not like it, if the Constitution says you can have it, then let them have it. Uh, so on an issue that's very important to a lot of folks in Louisiana, uh, he's a strict constitutionist. Let me ask you, what what key rulings will you be watching for if Justice Kavanaugh is approved? What are some of the key things that just gen- John Q. Public should be looking for out of the Supreme Court now? Well, clearly he supports the Second Amendment. That's going to be incredibly important to people in Louisiana. Uh, he also thinks that... Um, uh, regulatory agencies like EPA should not be able to kind of have their will no matter what. And he has consistently tried to pull those agencies back to where they're under the control of Congress. I think that's incredibly good. Uh, so if you think about some of the things we've been concerned about on regulatory overreach, I suspect he would side with uh, conservatives on things like the Waters of the U.S. Act, et cetera. On abortion, the left's going to go after him on abortion. Uh, he's a committed Catholic. I assume he's pro-life, but he also says that he respects precedent, which is kind of code for he won't uh, attempt to o- overturn Roe v. Wade. But uh, And frankly, I'm pro-life, so whatever I think about that, uh, that's what his position publicly is, uh, and that's going to be something important to folks. Dr. Bill, in the first segment, I likened uh, Judge Kavanaugh, well, I likened the Democrats. I likened the Democrats to that episode of Andy Griffith about Opie and the spoiled kid. Um, how crazy is this going to get? How, how, how insane? What kind, of, what kind of protests bordering on violence or maybe even spilling over into violence? <laughs> Last night, I'm walking home. I go to the White House. I'm walking home. And they got this full out, this full out protest in front of the Supreme Court. I'm thinking it doesn't matter who he nominated; they were going to protest. So I actually videoed it. Then some guy was videoing me, videoing them. So I began to video the guy videoing me. So anyway, <laughs> well, let's it was talk. Ten o'clock at night, and they were in full throat. Let's talk for a second about the de- uh, some of the Republicans that might be traditionally. If he votes, i.e. Murkowski from Alaska and and Susan Collins from Maine, are there any others? What do you expect from those two? And are there any other sort of uh, what, what what are referred to as rhino votes in the media that might not support a Trump pick? So they both, both Murkowski and Collins, voted for Kavanaugh when he was appointed to the D.C. Circuit Court, where he is now. Uh, so they both, both voted for him. I think they'll end up being yes votes. The, um, there's also three Democrats from very red states, states that Trump won by 20-plus percent. Uh, so I'm suspecting they're going to be, if they're going to represent their state and represent their people, they will vote yes. And they yet, vote no. And yet Dick Durbin from Illinois is telling the Joe Manchins, the Bill Nelsons, the Claire McCaskills, don't worry about your own reelection. Don't worry about representing the wishes of your people. It's... It's up to you to stop the Trump pick. Do you think that has any, you think that's got any, any legs? That's how Durbin blames those three or four senators uh, effectively if the guy ends up passing, no matter what the vote count is. 
I always find that politicians are willing to sacrifice other politicians' seats. <laughs> so Durbin is okay if Manchin loses. Durbin just doesn't want to lose himself. Uh, let, I hate to be cynical, but that's uh, that's kind of my take on that. Let me ask you about Kavanaugh and the Affordable Care Act, because he's quoted as saying at one point, um, I don't need maternity care. We've heard that a lot. Do you anticipate that he will be one of the justices to lead the charge um, to completely unravel Obamacare? Because there are many legal challenges pending. You know, Obamacare is pretty much unraveled now, uh, at least the portion that, that matters to people. The individual mandate, we repealed the individual mandate that forces you to buy insurance, whether you can afford it or not. Uh, the Trump administration continues to go after other things as well. So I think that the uh, individual mandate for, excuse me, the individual market portion of Obamacare uh, is uh, really kind of in a skeleton phase right now. There's going to be some continued challenges, but uh, right now we've got to put something in place of Obamacare that gives people access to care, but which, which, which we can afford as a country. Uh, and, uh, and I'm not sure the courts are going to have. They'll have a role going forward, but I don't think that'll be as prominent as the state Second Amendment. How critical is it that we have uh, one of our senators sitting on that Judiciary Committee to hear this nomination? You know, I think uh, it's great having John there. John's going to do a good job. He's going to represent our state well. He really is. But on the other hand, I think this guy's going to pass out a committee, and I think he's going to be confirmed. Uh, so uh, he's just a solid candidate. And it's going to be hard for three or four Democrats to vote against them for anything other than nakedly partisan things. So Senator, I think we got our next Supreme Court justice. Senator Bill Cassidy, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Uh huh.